Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the newest version of Avira, free antivirus for Windows. I just realized that I've never tested this product with Malix, and given how popular it is, I feel like it should be on the website with the results. So to kick things off, we'll take a look at the actual product itself. We've got a centralized user interface. This is brand new, of course, but I still notice some inconsistencies within the design. For example, if you open the antivirus, they've got a brand new UI for this. But if you actually go ahead and try and do a scan, let's say, you will notice that we switch back to the old interface. So we've still got Luke Fallwalker, the legend, and it seems the engine is pretty much the same and the UI is exactly the same as it's been for years. Personally, I've never been a fan of this particular design scheme, plus the way the engine works. It seems to be very prone to crashing, especially in high pressure situations, but we'll see how it does during the actual test. Maybe they've made some stability improvements behind the scenes. Now, in terms of the main user interface, it's not bad, I guess. I like the fact that they've changed it. I just wish the scan was more integrated into the UI rather than the windows still being separate and using the legacy design. One thing I'm definitely not a fan of is the new installer, which silently got Opera into the system. <laughs> totally needed that. But hey, enough talking about stuff. Let's get testing. So as usual, we're going to run our test with Malix, which is essentially going to automate the execution of over 1500 malware samples collected recently. This is all going to happen from a network drive that is over here. As you can see, we've got 1576 files and it seems Severa is already starting to detect them. So let's get a move on. Real-time protection is of course enabled. So we're free to execute our files. Now it's always interesting to watch how a product reacts to this kind of malware bombardment through a network attack vector. I think this is highly relevant these days because with a lot of targeted attacks, hackers often use compromised systems to launch attacks on the intended victims. Now we'll also take a look at the CPU usage as the test progresses. So as you can see, Avira is taking the lion's share of the CPU which is perfectly understandable given that it's dealing with a lot of malware in real time. So far, the test seems to be progressing reasonably fast. Plus, we are maintaining a proactive detection of 100%, which is fairly impressive. Oh, just as I say that, it drops and we have a few misses. But this is not the end of the world. After the test is complete, I'm going to analyze the system and we'll see what traces we've left over. Something to note based on history is that Avira has really good signatures. That's been my personal experience with their products. So I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with a very high proactive detection. The real question is going to be what happens to the malware that manages to get past? Do we have any infections on the system or does everything disappear upon reboot? Which is of course the ideal situation. Now we've got a firewall alert for a certain file. Now, since we are testing Avira specifically here, I'm going to allow access. I'm fully aware that in a real world situation, you would block that. But again, we're not testing Windows firewall capabilities here. We're seeing what Avira can do on its own. So we've got another file which executed successfully once admin privileges. Again, I will grant because we're testing the effectiveness of Avira and also because hey, users can often click on alerts the same way due to alert fatigue. All right, so it looks like all our files were successfully executed. We've achieved a final proactive detection of 99.3%, which is quite good. At the same time, I do notice that we have certain malicious processes on the system. Well, for the moment, I will call them just processes and we'll figure out if they're malicious or not. Before we go ahead and reboot the system, I'm just going to open Process Hacker, analyze what's on the system. So we've got essentially three different processes here. These two seem to be very similar. Now the real question is, are they going to persist upon reboot or are they just going to disappear without a trace? 
that's what we're going to find out. So we'll restart the system, run CCleaner, get rid of all the temp files, and we'll see if any malware prevails. Welcome back. I didn't notice any strange artifacts after the system rebooted. All the processes seem to be normal. I don't see anything that persisted. However, all of our second opinion scans, Malwarebytes, Hitman Pro, and Norton Power Racer have found this one file in app data roaming. This is of course a false positive, so don't mind this, but we're talking about this. So it's 905 kilobytes and it's present in app data roaming and this random folder. And it seems pretty much every engine has a specific signature for it. If we take a look at Norton Power Razor, this is a very new file seen less than a week ago, and there are many indications that the file is untrustworthy. If we actually go and take a look at the folder, it's empty. And I even tried listing everything with DIR and it doesn't appear here either. Keep in mind, I have checked hidden items as well. So this is quite interesting. I haven't seen anything like this in a test recently, if not ever. But the fact that every single engine picks it up, it's, um, well, I did check before one of the scans finished and restarted some of the scans after that, after noticing that the directory was empty. So there's no accident here. It's not like the file was removed by Avira while the scan was going on or something like that. So either the file is concealed in some way or something has confused our second opinion scanners. Either way, the results are still quite good. This is the only thing we're talking about. Apart from this, there's absolutely no traces of malware on the system, which is pretty good considering we ran over 1500 files. So overall, I'm quite happy with the level of protection afforded by Avira. I'm still a little bit concerned about the lack of, let's say, after execution behavioral analysis on this. It does have a head heuristics, but I feel like these days there are usually a lot more components in the detection mechanism. And Avira seems to rely heavily on the initial detection via real-time scanning. I'm not sure if something gets past that, if it has any further defenses. As we also notice, their real-time scan is quite good. They have really good signatures and hence a pretty good result in the test. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm quite curious. Have you seen invisible files like that before? Is there something I'm missing? The results will of course be on the website, the pcsecuritychannel.com. So check that out. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Maybe we'll take a look at some of the more premium of your products in the future, see how their other components stack up. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.